Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's this. Alex, Let's talk. we need to talk. All we right, need to have a couple's therapy session here. Okay, what are we going to talk about? All right, we're going to oh, do I a... love this one. I love this exercise. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do the staring contest exercise, contest. the soul gazing. Okay? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sh- I love this one. Love here this go. one. All right, we're going to do it. Okay. Okay, I lost. I, I blinked. I, I was right. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was blinking the whole time. Okay. <laughs> but I was gazing. Mm, All right. Mm, Here mm. to talk about the Falcon in addition to the Winter Soldier exclusively <laughs> on Disney's As it is... <laughs> sub- ab- edition. subscription service. Yes. yes. Uh, as it is called, yes, the Falcon in addition to the Winter Soldier. That's the official name nobody wants to talk yes, about. That's that. No one wants to talk about. It's just that's going to be our review name. The, the Marvel series that no one wants you to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, reason, yeah. uh, so so before we d- dive too deep into spoilers uh first impressions of the whole series zach what, you th- what, what are your thoughts thought it was good i thought it was good yeah. i think it's at least on par with wandavision for me i'm still yeah. not sure which one i i totally prefer but i think they're both yeah. great and i think they offer as far as disney plus goes comparing them to each other is the first thing you do but uh i think they show two different sides of things, but obviously the yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is a more traditional Marvel, but it was cool to see that in, because we haven't really seen that in Disney Plus yet in this, mm. and I think it works well as a, as a series, but it's not too long. It's only six episodes, uh, the season at least, mm-hmm. but um, I think it's really cool. They, they bring up some uh, heavy themes Yeah, they really get into it. And, like, I didn't expect, honestly, at all. I didn't even think about it going into it. They would go into the themes they went into. And I, uh, it's not where I expected it to go. And Yeah, uh, I, I was hoping they would tackle stuff like that because that that's sort of what I was... That is what I wanted. That's definitely mm-hmm. what I wanted them to do. I didn't want... I Like, I was hoping for some... So, for myself, the Captain America movies are probably my favorite series as a whole. So uh, the first Avenger, um, Captain America, and what was Captain America, the the Winter and the Winter, Soldier. Yeah, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> what am I? What am I talking about? Captain America, Captain the, America Winter the Winter Soldier. The Winter Captain Soldier. Captain America and, and the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. A different thing. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and then Civil War. Um, those I actually, three films ha- I haven't great. seen two of those. Have you not seen Civil War? I have seen Civil War. I okay, I, I was seen... going to be like that would make that would make watching this fairly d- difficult. I would think. Wait, how many because are there the... all together? Three. There's three. Yeah. Okay, then I just haven't seen The Winter Soldier. Ironically. Uh. Oh, which is oh, that's <laughs> it's that honestly, it probably top three Marvel films. That film yeah, is so it's so good. We should watch it. Up, we should review it sometime. I don't know. I feel like um, that that one came out and like the like the middle Thors that I missed, the early yeah. Thors. I feel like it was around yeah. the time of Marvel where it was just like, I wasn't as Phase into 2 it. was, yeah, Phase 2 was a little, yeah. it, it, was was just, per, it was great overall, but. That was at a time where I was just less into the MCU in general. So yeah. it was like kind of overstimulated on uh, comic book movies and stuff. So yeah. I was just like, eh, I won't watch that one. Yeah. And then I just watched Civil War because it was like an Avengers basically. It was, a, it, yeah, it was a basically Avengers 2.5. But now I'm back into the MCU, um, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know. I, I was really glad that it tackled it, it sort of tackled some heavier themes than than One Division. I mean, not than One Division. One Division tackled some heavy stuff too, but it was tackling heavier themes than you would necessarily expect. Just a, oh, it's just a traditional Marvel to do, mm-hmm. and I really appreciate that because I think it did it very well. I don't think it was. I'm sure some people will probably accuse it of being too heavy-handed, um, particularly in a couple places. Mm-hmm. I thought it did it very well. I thought it did it very tactfully um, and tastefully, um, and I really appreciated it. Uh, overall, I was very, very thrilled by the series. Um, I'm kind of with you in the same boat. I, ca- I can't really decide what because they're both doing very different things. WandaVision is doing its kind of its own thing, but yeah. this is doing kind of, like you said, a more traditional Marvel thing. But it still feels fresh. It still feels new and 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 there's some more depth unique to in it way. yeah um because you but, know wandavision um, did have that filter of just being wacky with the mm-hmm. uh sitcom style that threw in and this one was just like you got to see the falcon struggling with with his inner demons and the 
the Winter Soldier struggling with his inner demons and yeah. seeing it play out. And they managed to have like good character progression, like six episodes. It was pretty nice. And yeah. I just appreciate the little character moments throughout as well. I thought it was great. For sure, I, I would I would highly recommend watching this. Um, I would say, if, if you need wanted any background information, probably Civil War would be the most helpful film to watch because it's I would Civil War and then the most recent Avengers films because those are the most important in terms of background for this particular mm-hmm. um, this particular show. So and I think they've done um, it again where they made me actually care about these two characters that were minor mm-hmm. in terms of MCU. You know, yeah, the very especially the falcon was very underdeveloped in general yeah i felt yeah i know so I, like I, in I endgame it was like oh he, he's gonna be captain america now i guess but they they convinced him he's like okay he's captain america I, I, i'm on board yeah so yeah. um so yeah so that that being covered let's let's go spoiler get into spoilers so spoilers. We'll, we'll do that spoilers so there was a lot of like topical themes that were covered in this show yeah captain falcon yeah, Captain. got it. Name drop. Did you hear? Did yeah? Did you hear someone in the background say that? Are you Captain Falcon? I was like, is it, is it, show me Captain your moves. Now? Yeah. <laughs> I love. I really I love the minor great. exchanges they have throughout, where it's like just the little character moments. I think the Anthony Mackie is great with those little. Uh, yeah, moments he's so he's so like, funny. He's really like, great. Uh, it, you black Black Falcon. <laughs> like, what? So I just call you Black Kid then? Yeah, you Black Kid. <laughs> I got him. Yeah, right? I, yeah, he's he's got he's he definitely has some comedic timing down. I think I it made me laugh when somebody said uh, one of Anthony Mackie's when Anthony Mackie is smiling, it makes you think that he's hiding something. He's always hiding something like presents for Christmas or something because he's always <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, like he's always got got that look. But he's. I think he he oh, totally owns it in in this show. I think he yeah he really comes into his own as a character. It, it's interesting um, when the show was first starting. I was reading some reactions and people were like, "I just don't get it. I don't get why. I don't buy that he wouldn't be cat. That he just he would be like, you gotta we gotta retire, Steve Rogers. No, mm-hmm. he's I was like Captain America's part of the past, and it's like. I, I immediately I was like, I think I know where this is going, and I really hope it goes there, and it did go there, and I was really happy it did because well, it's like that that version of America is not the same version of America that we're living in. You know, the thing that he represented mm-hmm. isn't the same, and the the struggle of, of a black American, it, it's just it felt so raw and real, and kind of like right for this sort of show especially with everything with um isaiah um oh yeah, uh, yeah. isaiah uh last name i don't remember uh, i don't remember either um, all that stuff was was fantastic i was just like it hit so hard i was yeah. just like oh my gosh that that because he was doing the same things that cap did basically and yeah. was in jail for 30 years for it and yeah and, and while like, cap was recognized as a hero and everything yeah it was like one of those like oh we got to sweep the sweep the dirty history under the rug sort of thing and it's like mm, that sort of stuff has happened in our history you know and it's like you shouldn't be ashamed of that you need to i mean in a sense you should be but in another sense like you need to you need to come to terms with that part of your history the darker sides of your history mm-hmm. and i think that that's that's to me what was so beautiful about like towards the end of the series is like it was how Sam was having to be like, yeah, I, I realize that I have this intention. I have my identity as a black man and my identity as an American are like kind of at, almost at odds with each other because of the, the amount of history that's, that's there that black Americans have not been treated right. And there's that tension, but I'm still going to fight for it. Mm-hmm. I don't know the answer, but I'm still going to fight for it. And I'm like, that is so powerful. And I love that. I thought that was so good. I thought it was so well done. And uh, yeah, that whole his whole character arc was just I thought it was great. And in general, I'm glad they showed him like battling with uh, not immediately accepting Captain America's shield and everything mm-hmm. because it always did it did feel weird at the end of Endgame. It was like, well, 
you can't just say that he's Captain America, right? Like he is, he didn't, he, he didn't live the experience of Captain America. So then he feels that the weight of that when he's, he's basically like, no, I'm not going to take up, I'm not going to take the title, even though Steve Rogers wanted me to. Mm. But then out of nowhere, for at the end of the first episode, you have this random guy who <laughs> the name is Captain America. He gives that nice wink. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Talk about talk about a guy you immediately hate. Yeah. You immediately hate John him. John Walker. Uh, John Walker, the most American sound name you could ever think of. And it's, um, they do some interesting stuff with him, and uh, and then his yeah. little buddy Lamar as well. Yeah. The, so the Battlestar. The, the Battlestar. Yeah. They he make, was great. I, I thought he was great too. By the way, he was cool. Um, and he was like his moral yeah. conscious, you know. Mm. But it was interesting how they kind of. They tried to make you sympathize him with a little bit. They show a little bit of his perspective, mm-hmm. and in some moments they kind of do. But it's ultimately but I'm t- like, yeah, I don't, don't want yeah. this guy to succeed. Obviously, no, I, I think, uh, yeah, I like, I like that they that they humanized him, but they, at the same time they're like, yeah, but you're not supposed to like him. Yeah, like y- you understand where he's coming from, but that doesn't mean that you agree with anything that he's doing. And I love and that I... shot with the the blood on the shield. That, oh my that gosh, episode. so good. There were so many. There were so many shots and things in this that i thought was so awesome Mm -hmm. um you didn't you didn't see as much with wandavision because it was doing a very three camera setup sort of thing a lot of the time you know traditional sitcom there was just some fantastic camera work in this there was some really good shaky cam in the right moments yeah and some great choreography to go with it too choreography was amazing um because i mean having the falcon with the wings it's like you can do unique stuff with the choreography that you can't really do with most of the other superheroes you know you have yeah. stuff in the air like from the very beginning you had all this aerial choreography going on oh that, yeah episode. starting off the series with a bang there so it was really exciting that's yeah. really d- different than anything you really see in mcu mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's cool how it ultimately culminates and then he ends up with the shield and the wings a really cool suit yeah the really great suit yeah i thought um all his stuff was great um, now, other half of this, Bucky. Winter Soldier, Bucky's Bucky, great. He's Bucky, great I, I love Bucky. I've I've loved him for so long. Where, like I said, Winter Soldier is one of, my, if not my favorite MCU film. Um, you know, Infinity War is obviously, you know, it's Infinity War. You know, so yeah. <laughs> what hasn't been said about that about it at this point? How good that movie is. Um, but yeah, um, having having him come to terms with his past or and, it, and by the end of the series, he is not fully come to terms with his past. It it is still, and we'll talk. We'll just mention this. So at the very end of the show, they do change the name of the show yeah. to Captain America and the Winter Soldier, which I think was a comic run for a while. Hmm. Um, which so that was that was kind of cool. Um, but he's still known as the Winter Soldier. He's still dealing with that. Um, his name didn't change, and he he still has to hold that kind of that part of his identity his past he's still dealing with but seeing him like oh my gosh i just want to it's sebastian stan man he doesn't have to do much to for you to like really empathize and care yeah there's a lot of emotion in those eyes i mean he say they talk about like ah, he stares at you or whatever but like it's it there's more to it behind that there's something behind there that like a really deep loneliness and sorrow he just pulls it off so well. It's yeah, great. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. And I really love their relationship. They re- they bounce off each other well too. They do. Yeah, they're very funny together. Um, very buddy cop, semi antagonistic, um, but yeah, they bringing out the <laughs> bringing out the anno- annoying each other basically is kind of what they is kind of what they like to do. So. Yeah, um, I really did really like the, the the couples therapy scene. Well. Yeah, that's so <laughs> it was good. Just so over the top. I like how yeah. they were like locking their legs together. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it is close. That's it what you want. Like, right? It's like, hey, you want? Yeah, yeah, you like being this close, right? <laughs> but there was something about that scene that worked so well for me because there was like a moment in it where there's just like so many noises. They were like talking over each other and like shuffling around. I'm like, mm. <laughs> just <laughs> it was so good. It was, yeah. Because it felt real. It was like, well, there's so much going on. So yeah. wacky, yeah. I, and it, it, that scene also comes down to like why, why the shield is so important to Bucky, just in general as a symbol, because it's like the shield is Steve, 
Steve gave that to you. And if you're saying Steve is wrong about you, then maybe Steve is wrong about me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can't be a good person. You know, that that's that fear. And maybe I can never get over this identity. And it's like, he's holding that in the back. Like that, and this is episode two. We're figuring we're, we're hearing about this stuff. So it's like, um, or was that two or three? I think it was episode two. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're already getting some good, just a lot of really great character moments. Um, um, do you have any thoughts on one world, one people? The, uh, the organization interesting. is very hail Hydra yeah. and they're like little sign off. They tell each other one world, one people. Yeah, it was, it was fairly, it, it felt, it was interesting because, um, I think there's a, you know, there's some parallel parallels with some real world movements in a way, mm-hmm. just in terms of like, yeah, you know, it's like you know, breaking down borders or what have you, but it's obviously like they're, they're taking this a, a step, a step like way too far. Um, yeah, I think the thing that I liked so much about this is this just felt, it felt real and right. So this, this is a world in which half the population has just come back, you know, and within the last, like, I think it's like the last few months, I think this takes place after, I mean, it's obviously after WandaVision, but it's before, I think it's before Spider-Man Far From Home, I think. Hmm. Um in the timeline spider-man far from home takes place almost a year after uh the end of endgame like that whole idea of like so the world was you know the world was just in complete chaos half the population is gone people are displaced you know there's there's violence and war you know there's there's people taking advantage of the situation um chaos ensues and so that displaces a lot of people from their homes so in basically what had to take place as you sort of find out through through what people are saying is that like nations sort of were forced to sort of come together and be like well we have all these abandoned places but i mean they should be fine we don't know if these people are ever coming for all we know these people are gone forever so basically all these countries central europe america the i assume also happened in the americas and mexico all the southern south southern american countries basically we're like okay well we'll you know we can kind of compromise people from different countries if you're displaced what have you you can move into people's homes uh, that don't exist anymore when all those people come back you now have a massive problem on your hands because uh, what happens when those people come back and it's like oh there's people living in my house now that's my stuff like there's a that's a huge problem like it has a massive worldwide crisis essentially um so you this this thing with the global repatriation council the g right isn't that what it's called the global Global, that sounds right repatriation because basically it's like okay well then this is going to immediately create millions and millions of refugees immediately you know unless they were like ah i've got squatters rights or whatever you know so you've got then millions of people that are completely displaced from their homes and so this one this one um the flag smashers sort of rebellion kind of comes up because it's like we were fine before these people came out we were we were living in in peace and now all these people come back and now we're homeless and like that's not fair that's not just so you can kind of understand where the movement is coming from Mm -hmm. um yeah it's really it's really compelling it's very interesting um, but then they get into the, obviously the radicalization of yeah. What was there, her name? The main girl again? Cat, 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 cat. It starts with a K. Yeah. It's like Carly. 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 It's Carly. Yeah. Yeah. So they get into the radicalization, particularly of Carly, yeah. is the mm. main focus. Um, to where it's like, even Sam can see where she's coming from. Yeah. But then ultimately she's just willing to go further and further, let people, let innocent people die, and then it keeps going more and more it's like at what point mm. are you going to stop like w- yeah and it's interesting to see that so many different angles from it you know they've dealt with these kinds of like socio-political things a little bit in a mcu before with like civil war and how like they would disagree with how uh the government intervention and stuff like that but never mm. on this scale really where it's like you get so many different angles between like uh john walker and his angle, mm. um, and then you have Sam and Bucky, 
and you have the government, and then you have the the refugees themselves. The refugees themselves. Yeah. It's just you see so many different angles of it, so it's you can tell it's a little more nuanced than the stuff they yeah. usually do, which is is nice. Yeah, I I really like that. I thought that was it was good. Might have been a, maybe a little too simple. Hmm. Um, you know, she gets radicalized pretty quickly. Yeah. Where it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, she's just murdered a bunch of innocent people. I was like, okay, that was. That's a step above. Yeah, she had the one line, I think, was when she was talking to Sam, and she said something, and she's like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. You, you tricked me into saying that or something. But it was, like, something really cold that she said. Yeah, she's like, well, I'd do it again, or I'd kill him again if I had to. Something like that. And then, yeah, yeah. And then, and he was also like, when and then he's he, like, hold on, just think about what you just said. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. also when she talks to, like, John Walker later, and they're talking about uh, his buddy that died, and she was like, "Yeah, his life didn't matter to to my to my movement, so whatever." Yeah, it's just like, oh she man, doesn't have any any compassion for it. Yeah, because it's like her her angle is that well, the world doesn't have compassion for me, so why should I have compassion for any other person? That, that's kind of the thing, other than the people that I'm trying to be self serving to. Mm-hmm. Um, but which is interesting. It's it's an interesting angle for a villain. I think. And it's interesting that John Walker is kind of a villain figure as well, like mm. working against the, the heroes, trying to be a hero himself. But like you have the ultimately where Sam's trying to talk to Carly there and then he gets impatient and just comes running in and ruins it. And that ultimately leads to his friend's death basically. Mm. So it's like at that point, I feel like it's when you can fully be like, okay, I'm done with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he, he's just, he he's, did this yeah. himself. Like, we don't know how the conversation would have ended necessarily, but he escalated the situation and yeah, his friend was telling him not to, not to, and he was like, mm-hmm. let's wait it out. Let's see if we can, if we can talk her down, that'd be good. But yeah, once his friend was gone, he was just kind of like, do what it he takes to- now. Let me just murder, yeah. the, murder this guy with the shield. Well, he, like, he totally, like you had said, he's totally lost his like moral center sort of after that. I mean, yeah, he just murders a guy in the middle of the street. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone's like, <laughs> that's that's something that I thought was kind of cool is that they really did show us like how connected the world is. Like everyone's just like filming stuff that happens. It's like, yeah, that that's what happens these days, mm-hmm. you know? And then, he's, so, yeah. and then he's just hell bent on doing what it takes to, he, he went, I'm Captain America. And he's like, he wants to like, go kill uh, Carly now and then ultimately he has that little moment where he, he chooses to save the people and not go after yeah. her, but yeah. it's like, all right. So he does still have some some humanity in there. But he's got that super soldier serum. A lot of super soldiers in this. Yeah, a lot of super soldiers. Too. He's just so sleazy. He's just, that's the thing. Is like Captain America is like a ideal of humanity, right? He is like all of the, the good of humanity and stands up for the ideals but immediately when you come across John Walker, you're just like, hmm, something's like, it's like the thing that's like, you can, you can sort of see like what people put up on a pencil about him. You know, he was a hero. Uh, he was a football star. He was just all American guy. Um, but we as an, I mean, as a character, you can kind of get the sense it's like, something, something's mm. just wrong. You know, you get this. this yeah. Something's... And the way they introduce him where it's like, he immediately, he doesn't even th- like he says, it's a lot of pressure to be Captain America, but he's immediately like, "No, I am Captain America. I got it." And uh, he talks yeah. about it as if like he's been Captain America all this time. Like he's, even yeah. though he hasn't really lived it, you know, he's he's talking about is it's hard being Captain America. You know, it is like yeah. you've been Captain America for two days. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, chill, Cause, chill bro. Because I mean, <laughs> that's why. It, Sam is more endearing because he's not like immediately like okay now I'm Captain America just because I got this the shield I'm just gonna fully take that title. He's not myself. the blonde, blue-eyed white guy. Yeah, he's Sam Wilson. And the fact that they just literally did a carbon copy of Captain America and like make him look as close to him as possible, and they're like, mm-hmm. "This is your new Captain America. Have just accept it." Yeah, I'd like the. It was interesting when he at least. Um, got into that first fight with uh, Sam and Bucky at least showed that he had skills and stuff and they talked about mm. he had like the highest scores or he was basically the best of a, so- a soldier can be mm. so that was interesting because I was expecting him to just be just be like a face kind of thing an annoying thing they had to 
keep up with where he's like yeah. just talking to the public about he's Captain America but he actually at least is out there fighting and right. he can actually use that shield well so that was cool to see on their little uh, tr- almost like a train heist scene where they were on top of the tracks yeah there was some jank to that that was like the one that was kind of like the one fight scene that was like a little there was the editing was just kind of weird in mm-hmm. that I felt but overall it was it was a cool scene it was a good way to, to show that he he can fight he just can't stand up to super soldiers you know mm-hmm. um but he was still holding his own like yeah. just as well as the, as bucky and sam were at that point yeah so. yeah yeah okay so the madripoor episode um also wait there's a whole a whole other character that we haven't talked about yet who might be one of my my favorite returning character <laughs> of the whole season and that is baron zemo, zemo from yeah. Civil War, who I think a lot of fans felt got done dirty a little bit. Because Zemo is a fairly prominent character in the comics. I think um, they actually pay tribute to when Zemo puts that mask on. That's what Baron Zemo looks like in the comics. Like, he's got the, the hmm. sort of purple, yeah, yeah, yeah. purple mask on. And he was great. He was, <laughs> he was right. so great in this whole <laughs> season. He was wonderful. Um, yeah. I, I He's just so manipulative and kind of evil but he plays nicely when he when it benefits him Mm -hmm. um bad guys like that are are fun um he was definitely added the fun factor because he he was like an extra foil in between the bucky and sam relationship um where it was like bucky's like no we we do need him sam's like "Mm, i don't know about this guy and bucky's like yeah i don't i don't like him like this he's a means to an end but we got to, you know, we got to use him. We got to have him help us. And they did his character so much. He was such, so much more than just, I'm going to do this thing to make uh, Captain America and Iron Man fight each other. It, was not, it, was, it wasn't quite that simple. That's kind of what ended, ended up being in Civil War. Um, in this, it's like, he's like funny. He's like comic relief. He's charismatic. Um, he's conniving and evil and has his own agenda going on but like I mean that dance scene in Madripoor I mean <laughs> it's just like jamming out They, they uh, fans reacted so positively that, that Disney released uh, more footage because they're like oh there's more I, really? I know the, the actor said like oh there's more there's more of that dancing footage and Disney <laughs> released some of the extra stuff but from huh. from what I was from what the impression that he gave was that there was a lot more of him surprised just, like, they didn't put more in there. Yeah, um, it was great. Yeah, and yeah. I, I love the whole the whole uh, location for that episode yeah. it was really cool too. So great! I thought that was just it was very like it was almost like James Bond sort of mm-hmm. like it felt very like cyberpunk too. I literally yeah I was thinking yeah, something it, cyberpunk. The, the neon, I mean neon lights are like mm, mm. it just is so beautifully cinematic when you can when you can use that the sort of yeah deep shadows and neon lights uh one of my favorite scenes in skyfall uh uses is is a sort of like that so yeah i mean just, that was just it was fun that was just a lot of fun yeah and so, agent carter was also there as well she did she showed up again and ended up being a, kind of a weird twist i still don't really know if i I don't still don't really know how I feel about that the power broker twist. that she is the power broker. Yeah, yeah. it's like okay, uh, okay. That, that didn't do much for me. I mean, uh, it didn't yeah, do much she's, for me, but she's the most minor character of all of these <laughs> characters. It's like she, she got displaced at the end of Civil War because she helped uh, get them out of the. I don't know if she helped get them out of the um, the raft, or if she just stole Captain America's shield. She did something. And it ended up on the, the shield on the rocks and but, didn't get a pardon for some reason. But I did. She did have some really badass choreography, though. It was awesome. Her fight scenes were awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I appreciate it's particularly that. Particularly the one in, in episode three was was fantastic. So um, that's something that can, can be said that even just from these two series, you can tell there's going to be such a level of quality to like Disney Plus shows that it's like almost movie like in their yeah, choreography I, and directing. I think the season had a budget of like 150 million or something. And you can see it. It legitimately looks like a movie. I was watching the last three episodes uh, before we started today on my TV, which has is 4K HDR. It was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It was one of the most 
beautiful looking things I've watched on this TV. <laughs> it looked yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it blew my mind how good it looked. I was like, oh my gosh, the details, like the the coloration, it was just so good. The action was very clear. Cinematography was great. Music, they used the Winter Soldier theme again, which I love. Um, it's just such a creepy, eerie theme. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, his his date uh, in the first episode. <laughs> Yeah, she's she's a very pretty lady. I like that. I, I did like the whole interaction. <laughs> like how they just yeah. play Battleship. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> play Battleship. So drinking Battleship, drinking where you drink battleship. after every single hit or miss. It's like yeah, you, Jesus. Yeah. But oh, and, and I did really like the whole um, that whole storyline with the older man there. Oh yeah, that, that like really le- cool. legitimately broke my heart. Yeah. I was like, that was such such a good. It was really well done because you know yeah. they did kind of they threw that scene in out of nowhere. It was the flashback scene of Bucky mm-hmm. killing this guy, uh, who did seem out of place in the in that whole scene where he was killing everybody. But yeah, and then you get that explanation later. I'm like, oh, that was his son. Yeah, in that episode because he wait because yeah. the whole thing he's going to to therapy. Um, it's like court mandated therapy, basically. It's part of his pardon, um, and so, but he, he keeps having nightmares. Obviously, tries to hide it from her, and he's like, "Come on, I know you better than that." So, he's basically he's got this list of people, and he's trying to make things right. I mean, he's trying to uh, basically go to all of them and either turn them in or apologize in some some form or another. Um, but and there's a great moment in the fifth episode where him and Sam are talking about it. And Sam's like, well, what is it really for? Like, are, are you, and he's like, well, it's, you know, it's my list to, to sort to of make like, amends. Uh, to make amends. And he's like, no, it's to avenge. Mm-hmm. You, you're literally just, you're not solving the problem. You're solving, you're trying to make yourself feel better, but you need to make them feel better. That's the problem. It was just such a great like moment. Cause Sam, that was, and he explained it, like, his background was, like, you know, obviously he was, like, an Air Force guy, because he was, went on, like, recon mis- missions and stuff, but he explained that his background was in, like, relations and, and um, sort counseling. of, like, counseling. Yeah. So, like, I thought that was just a cool thing, where it's, like, you know, he knows what's up. Like, and that was a cool, a nice, like, bonding moment between them. I was like, that's... Yeah. There's a lot of great moments like that in here, and yeah. there's only six episodes, so I think yeah. they, they paced it really well. And ultimately, I just thought the ri- yeah, yeah, the writing was just really good. I just thought it was just really well done. Yeah. Um, and the final, the the payoff with Isaiah at the end, that final scene in the oh my gosh, yeah, awesome. oh so good, so good. I yeah, everything with him. So I guess um, I. Uh, his grandson there is like becomes Falcon in the comics. Really? So that they might be setting that up a little bit. Maybe because um, I was wondering yeah. why he was like so present in every, yeah. every time they interacted. But yeah. Yeah. I just love that whole museum scene at the end there. Oh yeah. Well the, the so museum cool. scene, the museum scene in the beginning too. Um, it's just every, every time they had museum. So I like history major. I love museums. Museums are awesome. Seeing yeah, they are. how exi- how exhibits are done is just like one of my favorite things and seeing... straight up straight up looks exactly like the smithsonian it's mm. phenomenal how good they made it look and then the, the final scene they oh, we've altered the exhibit we were adding important history here it needs to be told this story needs to be told and it's so it's such a great such a cool thing they made the, the museums look so good <laughs> yeah so in conclusion I thought yeah. it was great. What, yeah. what score would you give it out of 10? What if we give WandaVision? I'm trying to remember. Do I give it a 9? 8.5. I give it 8.5? This is right around the same thing. It's like it's like a 8.5 to 9. I really mm. like this a lot. Is there anything I don't know that it... sticks out to you that they could have done better? We didn't even talk about like Sam's sister and that whole thing. Like, Let's I, talk about Sam, Sam's sister. Sam, Sam can't get alone. That stuff was yeah. great. That felt so like real. Like It was just... That was something I, I thought was just so good about this. This is like, you have you have your heroes in your big your big Marvel films, but these are like your your blue collar heroes, I guess. They're the the smaller guys. Mm-hmm. Like one's going to therapy because he can't he's he can't cope. He's got like PTSD, and the other guy's like can't get a loan for his boat. 
like yeah. for his family's <laughs> boat like that it just feels so so grounded and i love and that's what i loved about marvel just in general like, yes they have all these fantastic situations also they, do, but they feel like real people and that's so great can you explain to me actually i was thinking this in the beginning uh why exactly do they need to appoint a captain america like that aren't there like a lot of superheroes like in america they're off doing a lot of their own things like I always feel it's weird because it's like there are, well, there are other heroes that could just kind of step up, right? Like, well, 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 who we got? So Spider Man's still in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, Iron Man is dead. Um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. Hulk is out there being smart. Yeah, but he's like he's not Captain America though. Like he's not he's not going on military missions. He's a scientist. <laughs> he could. Um, though. He, then you, so he's a scientist, so he's working with with that sort of stuff. I just find it got... weird because it's almost like they treat it like Captain America is the only hero. So it's like, are you going to take that role of I, the hero? I didn't, I didn't feel like they. I didn't feel like that. But then, then they like but... mention the Avengers uh, in passing. But it's like, yeah. Why don't we just rally behind the Avengers? You know, it's like you don't need Captain America. Well, they're all off right? doing their own their own things. Captain America is like is, is, it's more he's like a symbol. You know that's why it was such a like big deal when they toe. appointed it. What? Like all my toe. My yeah, like academia. all my yeah. He's a symbol, and like that was why it was kind of a big deal when they were like, "No, we're gonna have a new one," and it was like, "Okay." Um, and then why it was like a big deal that you had the guy who is the representative of America murdering a civilian in broad daylight. But in My Hero Academia, they even they at least had that conversation. It would have been cool to have the conversation where they were kind of like, "We should just uh, we need we can't fill the the hole of not having like a big hero. So let's rally behind all of our other heroes or like boost up our heroes more rather than like replacing." Well, I think that was I think that was Sam's idea, right? That was sort of his thing at the beginning. Was like we it's time for new heroes. Like we we can do our part rather than having to refill those shoes then we'll, we'll just do our part but it, it was apparent with the crisis of the world that they needed there needed to be something more there did need to be a new captain america of mm. some sort so yeah and a lot of the other avengers are off doing their own thing like or our scientists or uh or you've got um Rhodey, who's in the military like he's just I like a I don't know mm-hmm. I don't remember what his position but he's like in the military he can't really like necessarily go do anything so because so what was interesting is that they ended up just appointing a guy from the military somebody who was you know in a way similar to Steve but Steve was working very independently towards the end of of his you know he is not McMilitary man he is Steve Rogers Captain America he's an old war hero old military but he's kind of an independently contracted sort of who was the scrawny guy who got super soldiered and then mm-hmm. became captain america right so he had like the heart of captain america before becoming it whereas uh, john walker kind of came in and he was already like the yeah. the perfect soldier guy yeah well, yeah i mean that's what makes captain like Cap- captain america wasn't the super soldier serum was just to help to help him he or yeah he already had the he already had a 20 on his wisdom stat you know, and the charisma stat. He already had, maybe not quite charisma, but he already had 20 on his wisdom stat. You know, he mm-hmm. was able to inspire, do the right thing, and be a, be a, be a hero. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It's, it's like Azuku Midoriya in My Hero Academia, yeah. Yeah. where he, yeah. like, he didn't have the power, and he, but he showed that he's Bruce. good intentions and yeah. Rose true above. hero at heart, and you give him the power, and then he's, yeah. you can run with it. That's right. Anyway, so yeah, I think I, I'm going to stick with the 8.5. Mm-hmm. I, I do feel like, again, I, I think I think the, the the Sharon Carter stuff was a little weird. It was a little weak for me. I, I felt like, I don't know if they necessarily handled that reveal very well, because they, I almost feel like they revealed it too early. Like, you should have left that towards the post-credits, but they revealed it in the middle of the episode, basically, that mm-hmm. she was the power broker, and it was like, oh, okay. And then they, like, at the end when she got pardoned, it's like, I'm the power broker, and it's like, yeah, we we know, we, we 
we just <laughs> we just saw that in the, earlier in the episode. Like you didn't have to show it again. I think it would have been it made made a more effective twist that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So her stuff was a little weird. Um, some of the pacing was kind of awkward. Like it almost felt like we were wrapping up in the middle of the fifth episode, and then it was like, nope, we still got stuff. There's still a whole other episode to go. And I mean, I get, I kind of get what they were doing. It's like the downtime of the heroes so that they can reflect and and grow from what they've learned in the last few episodes. But then it was like, oh, but we got to rise for the final conflict again. So yeah, I mean, some of the pacing was a little weird. So it's not perfect, but it is absolutely scratching that captain america itch um and i'm i'm glad to hear um that the same uh director producer and writer are going to be on board for a fourth captain america film which i'm very much looking forward to also worth noting i I did watch i hadn't watched any of these episodes up until like yesterday so Mm. i watched them all the past two days very nice i do appreciate the shorter these shorter series almost i think it's it's nice it's not like I feel like series like these wouldn't lend themselves well to, like, 20 episodes, long seasons, you know? No, yeah, definitely not. So it's nice, especially since we have more on the horizon, that you could kind of, you don't get tired of them, so it's just, like, always fresh Mm -hmm. going through these shorter series. I would give it an 8.5 also, yeah. Yeah. So it'll end up being a Tarkon score 8.5, same as WandaVision. Yeah. Um, I think think these shows offer very, fairly different viewing experiences but i think they're both just they're great it's it's super entertaining fun tv which is exactly what i want from marvel yeah and with more depth than we're used to and like yeah thematically and yeah it's cool so what is your gut telling you that which one do you prefer if you had to pick one if i had to pick just one i would probably edge out wandavision just because it was so weird and experimental. I felt like it might have done a little bit more to sort of hint at... If, well, I say that, but but Sharon Carter's thing at the end was definitely like, yeah, it's hinting towards like what, what direction we're going to go in for, for sort of like the future. It's like there there are things, there are Marvel stories, I'm sure, that they're they're building up from the comics with stuff like that. I think I've heard of something called Armor Wars, I believe. So there might be something that they're sort of leading up to it with that or mm-hmm. that concept anyway um wandavision had i think bigger fish to fry because i think I, I think the stuff with the book and the mountain she went to at the end her astral projection form i think a lot of that magic stuff is going to be a big deal for the mcu going forward so i think that's i think that that's kind of where i'm thinking is probably bigger fish to fry but i think you know, overall, I, I liked the weird experimental stuff. I thought it, I thought it worked, served, used the format of TV very well. This in, in and of itself just kind of felt like a more fleshed out extended film, which is good in its own way. Um, but I think I, I liked it being weird a little bit more than, than this, despite, yeah. the fact, despite the fact that this gave me really nice, good Captain America vibes. So yeah. Yeah, I would probably give the slight edge to WandaVision also. But maybe it's recency bias, but I would also say that if like if, if I were to watch something now, I would, I'd much more in the mood for more of this than yeah. Than a, that's more that's really I I totally agree with you actually yeah. But it could just be recency bias. Like maybe. if we watch it reversed way, it could be like oh I want more Wandavision. Yeah. But I don't know. I felt I felt good with Wandavision leaving it where it was, whereas mm-hmm. like I would not be opposed to more seasons mm. of this. Yeah, I agree with that. And. And it seems like they're going to. Was it going to be Captain America and the Winter Soldier? Yeah, I think that would be it going going forward if they do another series instead of a movie. I, I think that's still kind of up in the air. I don't necessarily know if they are going to do. You don't know, but don't they are going to. Well, at least have a fourth Captain America movie. You know that. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. that's pretty good. It's a pretty good series. Yeah. I, yeah I'm loving really, Disney I'm Plus so it. far. It's delivering. For sure. You get to watch some some of the Simpsons that's on there too. Yes, the <laughs> and you're not watching that. Yeah. What's the next series, Loki? When's that? Loki, I think, is the next series. Uh, I think that's pretty soon. I think that's pretty in soon. June. It's pretty soon. I, don't I wonder know exactly if they already have like something queued up after that. Like, is it always going to just lead into another? Yeah, I don't know. Actually, cleanly. Also, when's the next big Marvel uh, movie come out? Well, we've got. Um black widow which is out i think fairly soon 
Is it so in May? Lo- Loki's in June. Uh, the Marvel What If series is coming mid-2021, so my guess is probably like August. Hmm. That's like an animated thing, right? I don't... I think it is. It's going to be... Yeah, I think it's going to be an animated sort of thing, but that's going to be like based on the What If sort of Marvel comics. So it's going to be like weird, alternate, bizarre universe sort of stuff. I wouldn't mind um, uh, checking that out. Oh, yeah. that'll be. I think that'll be a lot of fun. There's supposed to be a Miss Marvel uh, coming hmm. as well with, uh, I believe... Kamala Khan is Miss Marvel. Uh, there's a Hawkeye series that's coming later this year as well. And then next year we got Moon Knight and She-Hulk. So we can get a little wild with it. Like right now we're with uh, the characters we're, we we at least know from the MCU loosely, and then we'll get into some weird ones. They'll be interesting. Mm. So when does Black Widow come out? May. I think they might have moved it back again a little bit because i think it was originally like a year and then they're like mm, maybe a little bit more it's coming out in july that's crazy <laughs> it keeps, yeah it was supposed to be out in may last year last year yeah i know it's wild i still want to see I mean, that's, it that's what the world uh, me too I, so there is a movie theater that's open near me i'm actually maybe consider this is totally uh, off topic but like i might i might go see mortal Kombat since it is playing there mm-hmm. so uh, okay anyway yeah. All right, that's it. Yeah. So, if uh, what what do you feel that the fine watchers of this should go check out? What what things should they go see? Well, the easy answer answer would be Wandavision. Yeah. You know, I don't like easy answers. I don't like easy answers. Okay. Uh, so, so, what else should they go watch then? On our what channel? is something Falcon or Soldier related that we've talked about? Let's think. Falcon, Bird, Animal, Wolf versus Bear. You watch her wolf versus bear review okay it's a great rusty nature yeah. documentary there it is <laughs> yeah it's a no it's not <laughs> it was not that good find out it, was it good or not okay watch her review. <laughs> yeah, i guess you have to just find out even though i told you all right Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to our podcast feed. Like the video. Leave a comment. Hit the notification bell. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook at Tarkaron T W O. Don't flirt with my sister. Ha <laughs>